my goodness. Good Bob. My gosh. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. Woo, God is good, is he not? Man, man, I could do that song one more time. God is jumping. Great to see all of y'all this morning. As Lydia said, by the way, welcome to all of you joining us online. Can we give it up for our online family and friends out there? Lydia said it, it, this is our last uh, time under the tent, and it's been five months of outdoors, three months under the tent. We, it started October, uh, uh, I don't know, anyways, the first part of October. Literally, we've gone through the fall. Now we've gone through the winter. Yesterday was the first day of spring. Spring has sprung, and now we're going back inside in-person gatherings. And uh, some of you are still not you know, able to or want to go inside. We're going to have overflow outdoors. Always our online campus. Aren't you grateful for the online campus? Oh, my gosh. And, and I just got to take a moment. Before we uh, dive in the message, I've got to stop and just say thank you to some people. I really do. First of all, I cannot miss this moment by saying thank you to our creative team. Creative team, would you come out here? Come out here quickly. Come on. Come on. Come on, guys. Let's give it up for these guys. They're the one that makes this happen online, in person. Look at these guys. You're our heroes. Big shout out to Marlene, the, cr the creative lead. Big shout out to Brant. Brant, this guy is our campus pastor of our online. And, and the Lord used you, Brant, to help set this whole thing up online. And we honor you and we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, guys. I also want to say thank you to all of our musicians and singers who get up early and... Winter time, winter time. You know, musicians don't do early anyways. Artists don't do early anyways, but they were out here early when it was like sometimes 35 degrees, and, and they just did it anyways. We honor all of our musicians and our singers. I want to give it up also for Pastor Kim. I saw her somewhere. Kim, come here real quick. Come on. Kim, Elmer, is Elmer with you? Kid life, student life, they are our leaders, and Kim threw this all online. I mean, online and in person. How you did it, man, I don't know, Kim, but I, we just adore you. We love you. Thank you so much. We bless you. Amen. All of our volunteers, I got to say something. Hey, Tony, stand up back there. Tony, 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 the head of our prayer team, day in, day out, Tony. Tony Jones, rock star. I'm telling you, man, all of our... In fact, I want any of you who have volunteered over the last five months to stand up right now. Come on, stand up and let us give you some honor. Give you some honor. Come on, let's give it up for these volunteers. Man, you guys make it happen. You make it happen. Thank you. I'm telling you, man, we've got some heroes around New Life Church. I'm so proud of every single one of you and uh, all of our online campus family thank you for your patience as we've developed our online campus thank you to those of you who brought your own lawn chairs week after week after week you've been patient and uh, as we figured out what to do during this pandemic you know with you know do you wear a mask do you not wear a mask do you six feet you're not and and during all the debating you've been very patient even when you may not have agreed with pastor james on this and thank you. I really mean that from my heart. And also thank you all to all the donors. You know, a, a year ago, one year ago, we were down 59% over the previous year in giving. 59%. It was a scary moment. And, but I got to tell you, you fast forward one year later, and the Lord has restored our finances. God has blessed the church to keep this ministry going through you. And I thank you. I honor you for it. So I, I don't know if you know this, but today uh, is also World Down, World Down Syndrome Day. And some of you know, we have a beautiful granddaughter. Her name is Emmy. And Emmy, uh, they were going to try to be here, but aren't able to. Anyways, but Emmy is watching me right now because I told her mama, I said, you make sure Emmy's watching me this morning. So Emmy, Poppy wants to tell you he loves you. He's proud of you. You're the dearest thing to your nanny and I. We love you. 
And I'm telling you, Amber and John are the best parents of the, all their kids. But to, to Emmy, you know, with Down syndrome, it's such a beautiful thing to see. So to all of you who are, are parents uh, and guardians of children with special needs, we just want to say thank you. And we do honor you. We do, from our heart. Well, we're in this series, this life group series, and... Um, off of my book, Relationships 101, and today's the fifth weekend of it. How, how, how's your group going? Good. Going good? It, we're creating relationships, deeper community. Uh, by the way, the homework this week is to read chapter 9 of my book. You'll enjoy it. It's very personal, by the way. It's, uh, I'm, I'm letting you inside my heart about personal security. And I want to talk about that for just a few moments today. You say, James, what in the world is... Uh, personal security have to do with great relationships. What it has everything to do with it. Everything. Because here's the truth. If you feel insecure, if you feel inadequate in your own life, you are going to treat other people the same way. Jesus said you will love your neighbor how? Come on. You can do better than that. Love your neighbor as you love You love yourself. There is a proper self-love that Jesus taught. He said, first love God, but then love your neighbor or your wife or your husband or your, or, or your girlfriend or boy or your child or friend. Love other people like you love yourself. So here's key. If you become secure in who God made you to be and you learn that proper self-love, then you're going to have security, and out of that security, you're going to learn to really love others deeper and empower them greater. Is a very, very important subject for us to look at today, and, and it's, I've experienced it many, many times. I remember about 20 years ago, I went to this big pastor's event, and uh, I was just, you know, mixing and mingling and hanging out, loving on people and meeting new friends, and I was very gregarious, outgoing, and, you know, come here, give me a hug. I know I don't know you, but give me a hug, you know, come on. Then all of a sudden, in walks this man by the name of Wayne Cadero. I mean, famous, wonderful Wayne. If you don't know Wayne Cadero, Wayne Cadero uh, is a pastor of, at the time, he had a church of around 20,000 people that showed up Easter. He had uh, 13 different services, eight different campuses. He was wonderful Wayne. And I remember he walks in the room and every head turns and he's like, he just... You know, he's very physically fit. <laughs> and I have my pot belly. <laughs> and there he is. He's got a head full of hair and is blowing in the wind as he walks in the room. And there I am. I'm 40 years old and I got this little patch I'm trying to keep. <laughs> I'm in denial of the tragedy that is going on on top of my head. <laughs> and Wayne walks in the room and just like all of a sudden I went, I felt horrible. All of a sudden, I wasn't as outgoing. I began to become quiet and introspective and because wonderful Wayne was in the room. <laughs> Here's the truth. It's very easy for us to sabotage our relationships by our own personal insecurity. So the more we learn to deal with those insecurities, the more that God is going to in increase and improve our relationships. Why do we feel inadequate sometimes because that feeling of inadequate I'm not enough is what creates the insecurity so there's a couple reasons one I would just say this that a feeling of insecurity comes from inadequacy comes from unfair criticism what does that mean when you're a child it, it happens usually when, when we're young because we're very impressionable and vulnerable and you'll have a teacher or a parent somebody will say something to you that is a, an unfair criticism I I think you have big ears. Or I wish you would not have been born. Or I wish you were more like your sister. Or you just keep going down the line. It's unfair criticism, but you don't know that as a child. And if you're not careful, you live the rest of your life listening to that voice, that unfair criticism. Another reason for feelings of insecurity is unrealistic compliments. We do that a lot nowadays. We, we say to our kids, you're the best. You're awesome. There's nobody like you. You're the greatest. 
And we give our kids trophies for everything. They ain't done anything, but we give them a trophy. You showed up. Here is your trophy. You're awesome. <laughs> you remember the days when we used to give trophies to people who actually won something? Remember that? <laughs> I'm just saying. I, don't, I see your eyes. Some of you, like, give me the laser beam eyes at me right now. But the kid grows up thinking they're the best, but internally they're going, no, I'm not the best. So they go through life, they're not careful, feeling this undue pressure that I'm never going to be enough because of the unrealistic uh, criticism and because of the unrealistic compliments. And then another reason is unwise comparisons. It's what I did with Wonderful Wayne. I compared my physique with his physique. I compared my hair with his hair. Now, some of you ladies, you know, let me just talk about the ladies for just a second. You ladies, you know, we, we do this. We compare with each other. Not we, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm good on my gender. I got it. I got it. I meant you. Well, you ladies, you know, you go up to your friend's house. You knock on the door. You're feeling good about yourself. You're feeling pretty and lovely. And then Miss Stunning walks, opens the door, and there she is. She walks out, and she's, wah. And her hair is perfect. Her lipstick is perfect. Her makeup is perfect. Her nails are perfect. Because she gets her nails from my daughter-in-law, Amber. You owe me, Amber. And she is just stunning. She's perfect. The perfect home. Everything's perfect. And all of a sudden, you feel like Miss Shabby. You don't feel so good about yourself anymore. All of a sudden, you why? Because you have begun to compare yourself in an unwise way. Social media does this, right? You get on there and somebody's got, you know, a thousand likes and you got two. <laughs> you know, you, you post something and nobody's looking at it. You can look over here and somebody's got another post. And everybody in the world's looking at it. And if we're not careful, the social media uh, experience can create insecurity in us because it's based on unwise Comparisons. Now, I want to show you this morning from the story of Gideon how you can get over these insecurities, move into security to learn to love yourself as God loves you so that you, therefore, can love others the way you love yourself, the way God loves you. You see the way that works? So we're going to talk about this. Now, I want to work through this story. It's in Judges chapter 6. Let me read it to you, and I'll break it down to you. Here's the story. Judges 6, 11 through 16. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah. Oprah, man, she's been around a long time, hasn't she? <laughs> she recently did this controversial interview with, you know, anyways. Okay, anyway, sat down under, under the, the oak in Ophrah. They belonged to Joash, the Ebizite where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Now watch this. What in the world is Gideon doing threshing this wheat in a wine press? Everybody knows that when you're going to thresh wheat, you go to the high places. Because you want to... What, 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 what? I'm about to kick my water? Hey, listen, man. You made me think of my... <laughs> y'all look here. Look at my... Can y'all see that? Y'all can, I don't even see that out there. Anyways, I thought that's what she's going to come and fix my, my la laces or something. Anyways, y'all just leave me alone. What was I saying? Oh, 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 threshing wheat. Thank you. Thank you very much. So then, you know, anyways, you, you, you thrash wheat by going to the high places. You throw the wheat up in the air, and the wind carries away the chaff, and then you got the pure wheat, right? But he's down in the wine press threshing wheat. Why was he in the wine press threshing wheat? It's because he was scared to death. He was hiding. He was full of fear. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you. Mighty warrior. What? He is scared to death, hiding, and the Lord says to him, Oh, you mighty warrior. <laughs> if I'd have been there to say, Hey, Gideon, you mighty scaredy cat. <laughs> you chicken. But the Lord saw something in Gideon that he didn't see in himself. 
But sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, then why has all of this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about? When they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and put us in the hand of Midian. Some of you feel that way today. James, if God is really for me, then why is all this bad stuff happening to me? If God is really for me, I just feel abandoned by God. You notice how God responded to Gideon? Did he get on to him and say, man, that's just dumb, Gideon. You shouldn't feel that way, Gideon. He didn't at all, and he won't get out of you for it either. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hands. Am I not sending you? See, whenever God, em God empowers you and calls you to do something in life, you're going to have two voices. You're going to have the external enemy, the external enemy that's saying, you can't do it. Who do you think you are? Then you're going to have the internal inner, inner me, the internal inner me, those voices from your past, those negative words, those negative criticisms. Who do you think you are? And you should be more like it. All that goes off in your head. And that's exactly what's happening to Gideon. Who do you think you are? But Lord Gideon said, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Do you see what he's saying? My, my, the ranger clan is the least in the neighborhood, and I, James, am, am the least of my family. What are you, you, you're calling me to do that? There's no way I can do that. It's total inferiority and adequacy and insecurity in his life. It's what some of you feel like right now. You know, James, I'm not the prettiest, I'm not the most talented, I'm not the most gifted, I'm not the quickest or the fastest. And oh, by the way, if you knew my past, you know God, I can't be used by God because of my past. And it makes you feel insecurity. Notice what Gideon's, Gideon says. Gideon says, but Lord, how can I save Israel, right? I'm the weakest, blah, blah, blah. And then the Lord answered him, I will be with you. Here's the punchline. I will be with you, and you will strike down the Midianites together. I'm going to be with you, and you will strike down the Midianites. There's three things you have to remember if you want to get rid of your insecurities, if you want to get rid of those feelings of inadequacy. The first thing you want to remember, you need to know about yourself, is this. God, God's view of me is different than I think. How many of you know that? God sees you different than you see yourself. See, God saw Gideon way different because remember he says, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. What? Me? You see, Gideon had something inside him that he didn't know he had. God saw something in him. I see in you. Jim talked about this last week. Do you remember that? Last week, Jim, if you weren't here, go watch the message. Jim did a great job. He really did. It's a great, great talk. But in the message, Jim talked about the I see in you conversation. And, and he talked about how we should always speak that into existence into our kids' lives. Parents, Prophetically speak into your child's life, I see in you. To see what God is seeing in their heart, and you call it out. And Jim, remember when Jim talked about when he was 14, I gave him a written prophetic word. And at the same time, I also gave him a verbal word that I felt like the Lord gave me, an I see in you conversation that said, Jim, one day your music will be heard around the world. Well, guess what? Just recently, on The Voice, that prophecy was fulfilled, literally around the world. Now, this is what's crazy about this story, and you, you, you may not even believe this, but I, I'm just shooting it straight to you. Last Sunday morning, he gave the talk. Sunday night, I'm going through my office stuff. As Lydia said, we're moving, and I'm going through my files, and I've got, I went through so much stuff. And I came across this file, and it just said, Jim, prophetic on it. And I opened it up, and lo and behold, I sat there in a puddle of tears, didn't I? Gosh, man. Because this thing, this thing that I read, it's, it's, 
the, the written, handwritten word of prophecy that I gave to Jim at 14 that it talked about Sunday morning that I thought had been lost. I hadn't seen this thing in 20 years, and it shows up. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I'm like, thank you, Father. Thank you for the confirmation. Just how, what are the odds of me coming across that the very day that Jim tells that story? So I called Jim up, and I said, Jim, you're not going to believe this. I just found this, and I'm sharing. I'm, Man, I'm, I'm full of tears, son. And you know what Jim does? Hey, Dad, that's, that's awesome, but couldn't you have found that earlier this week? It would have been my story a whole lot better this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. God's view of you is way different than what you see. So like with Gideon, you got to get your heart healed. Because when you get your heart healed and you begin to see yourself the way God sees you, and you begin to replace the lie with the truth about who you are, all of a sudden, you're going to experience freedom and confidence knowing who you are, and therefore you're going to love others as you love yourself. That's why this afternoon is so important, 4 o'clock, the night of healing. I, I am so pumped up about that because I know God is going to set some of you free tonight to heal your hearts. So here's how God sees you. Here it is, Ephesians 2 and 10. For we are God's masterpiece. Everybody say masterpiece. masterpiece. In the Greek, that word is poem. You are God's poem. God is writing a poem with your life. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. How many of you know that before you even took your first breath, God already had a to-do list for you for life? God says, I, I, I've already got this stuff for you to do. This is what I see in you. So live out of the prophetic. Live out of a life that's seeing things the way God sees them in you. It doesn't matter what everybody else says about you. It's what God says about you. Lauren Daigle's song, You Say. If you haven't heard that song, you need to hear it. Oh, my gosh. You Say, God. Sing it? Is that what you said? No, I ain't going to sing it. Thank you. What do I need to know about me? Remember, God's view of me is different than I think. And then God, remember that God has given me more than I think. He's, <laughs> he's given you more than you think. There's more in you. I, I love the, how God did not say to Gideon, hey, Gideon, before you go fight that battle, here's what I need you to do. I, I need you to go to a class. I need you to read a book. I want you to listen to one more podcast before you go to do what I told you to do. What? No, he didn't do that. He says this. He says, go in the strength that you already have. Let me say it again. Go in the strength. It's already in you. God said, I've already deposited in you what it's going to take. Everything it's going to take for you to win the day, it's in you right now. And I believe the Lord brought some of you here today for me to say that to you. You're saying, but James, it's such a big challenge. i got such a big problem. It seems impossible, and I, I, need, I, you know, I need to go get more education, more training. Yes, go get more education and training, but can I tell you, the anointing is already in you. The grace and the gifts are already in you. It's there. God deposited it, and all you've got to do is just step out in faith. Go in the strength that you already have. Don't wait to get more. Move in faith. So I'm here today, so James, I don't measure up. I don't have what it takes. I'm not good enough, smart enough, brilliant enough, pretty enough. I'm not, I'm not enough. And God said, no, you are enough. You, you, you've got all that you need. Listen, I am living proof. I'm absolutely living proof that God's put more in me than I could have ever imagined. I'm 17 years old. Senior in high school, God calls me to be a spokesperson for him. The one big problem with that is that is I had, to tell, I had to tell God no. Because, God, I am uh, like, I stutter when I talk. That's kind of a problem if you're going to be a public speaker. And, and, and I, God, I, you know, he, I mean, he gave me this vision that I would stand in front of thousands of people and, and, and preach the gospel of Jesus. At 17, he gave me that vision. Problem is that the biggest church I'd ever been in was 100 people. You fast forward now and you see what God has done 
And I am so humbled by it because I'm going to tell you right now, it's all grace, 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 grace. I don't deserve one bit of the props. It is God in and through me. But the fact that New Life Church has thousands of people, we went from 45 to wherever we're at, who knows, after pandemic, where we're going to be, who knows. But here's what I'm trying to tell you. It was already in me at 17. You see, God already put it in me at 17. God has already deposited things in you way more than what you know. And so when God calls you and he, uh, he, he uh, inspires you to go for this thing, this dream, this ambition, this ministry, this business or whatever, this relationship, internally you're going to have those voices, the inner me conversations that says, who do you think you are? And here's what you got to say to that inner voice and to the external enemies and to Satan himself. It doesn't matter who you say that I am. What matters is who he says that I am. And if he says that I can do that, and if he says this is inside of me, then I can do what God has called me to do and be what God calls me to be. It's in you already. Over this last year, during this pandemic, I can't tell you how many times seriously I've said to God, God, I, I don't have what it takes. I've never led through a pandemic. This is crazy. I mean, like next level craziness. When our church was down 59% in giving a year ago, I literally I've said to God, God, I don't know that I have what it takes. When you, you know, all the, the fighting and the debating about do you wear a mask or don't wear a mask and, and, and all the fussing over this stuff. And as a pastor, I've got, by the way, de Democrats and Republicans who are part of our church. And I get to pastor with them both. <laughs> Thank you very much. And in the middle of it, I got people, and I get it, they're, they're just as confused as I was. People mad at me, and we, you know, when we shut down the indoor thing, and we said we're going outdoors for the sake of our congregation, for the sake of safety. And I had, let me just say, I won't tell you, but we had a lot of people get mad at me, sent some pretty crazy stuff through emails and posting things, left the church to go to churches that stayed open. You know what, man? I'm not going to fuss with you over that. I, really, I, I hope, anyways. My job is to steward this house, to protect my sheep. Then I remember toughest, toughest few weeks of my life is when I had to lay off 53 people people that are my friends, people that I love, people that have been on my team for some of them 25, 30 years. We had to close down our two schools and close down a campus. I promise you there were many, many times in the middle of the night I just said, God, I, I, I don't have what it takes. But I can't tell you how many times, I really mean this, how many times the Holy Spirit would say to me, James, no, no, you can't do it, but I can do it through you. And Father said to me again and again, James, my spirit in you is enough. You've got what it takes. So you move forward in the strength that you have, and I will help you lead the church. And I'm, I really feel the Lord brought you here today to say to you, and some of you watching online, listen, the spirit of the Lord in you is enough. It is enough. Because there's divine power inside of you. There's divine wisdom. There's power and wisdom from another world that's inside of you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Second Peter 1.3 says, His divine power. Everybody say this with me. His divine power. Come on, say it again. His divine power. Power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. His divine power gives you everything you need. One last thing we need to remember. 
God's view of you is different than you think. God has given you more than you think. And lastly, it's less about me than I think. It's less about me than I think. What do I mean? This is where God says to Gideon, he says, I will be, everybody say I will. I will be with you and you will. Say you will. You will. You will strike down the Midianites. Here it is. You ready? I will, so you will. I will be with you, so you will win the day. It's less about you than you think, because some of you are trying to hold up the world like you're Atlas, you know. You're trying to be everything. You're trying to be the Messiah, the anointed one. And God says, listen, that job description is way too big for you. You've got to give up trying to be God. It's less about you and more about God. Here's what God says. Listen, I will be with you so you will win the day. You will conquer that addiction. You will conquer the pornography. You will overcome cancer. You will, because I am with you. You will have that marriage you've already always dreamed of. Because I am with you, you will win the day. You will be that man or that woman in the, in the workplace. You will, because I am, God says. <laughs> Let's say that again. You will, because I am. Remember when Jim was singing the great I am? Jehovah, Yahweh. The great God that created this earth, everything seen and unseen. The heavens, the heavens, the galaxies, the universes, that very God, the I am, is in you. He's for you. And because he's in you, he's for you. It doesn't matter what anybody else says about you. Talk to the hand. I am who I am by the grace of God. I am a child of God. I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. I am the chosen. I am the masterpiece of God. So let the devil and his demons say what they want. Let my enemies and sometimes family say what they want. Ah, oh, you'll never, listen, you just talk to the hand. With a smile, with a smile. Talk to the hand. Because greater is he who is in you, in you, than he who is in the world. I can do all things. How? through Christ, through the anointed one. Please don't miss this. If you've checked out, check back. What does the word Christ mean? The anointed one. The Bible says Christ in you, the anointed one in you, the hope of glory, right? So what does that mean? If Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one is in you, that means that you are anointed. You have the anointing of God in you, so you can do whatever God calls you to do. All right, and here's the punchline. You get that right, all of a sudden you begin to love yourself like God loves you. You're going to begin to love other people way different. And when they get squirrely and do dumb things and post dumb things, you know what I'm talking about. Just keep on loving them. Just keep on loving them. You don't give up. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this divine, sacred space out under this tent, out in this parking lot. Heavenly Father, on this last moment underneath this tent, I pray that your spirit would do a new work in us. How many of you, just with your eyes closed for a moment, how many of, of you, both here and online, would just say, James, I, I've been dealing with some some personal feelings of inadequacy and not measuring up and an insecurity that I, I want to just, I want to give, give it to God today. If, that, if that's you, I want you to just raise up your hand because I'm going to pray over you right now. Yeah. Come, Jesus. Just keep your hand up for a second. I want to pray over you. Spirit of the living God, I pray that with every hand, hand that is raised, Lord, the person at home or wherever they're at watching online, the Spirit of God would move right now. Fill them afresh and anew right now. 
Help them to see themselves through your eyes that they are more than enough. They are more than enough. Hear the Father say to you, you are my child. I am well pleased with you. You are my child. I love you. You are more than enough. You are more than enough. You can put your hands down with your head still bowed. There's some of you that internally you feel inadequate in your relationship with God because of your past, your sins, or your brokenness, or James, I'll never measure up. I'm just not enough. And the truth is, you're not, and neither am I, because none of us can be that righteous. But Jesus died on the cross to make you right with God. He paid for your sin debt to make sure that when you die someday, you're getting into heaven, not on your goodness, but on Jesus' goodness, what he did at the cross. If you want to pray with me a prayer that will make you right with your Holy Father through Jesus, through Jesus' death and resurrection, if that is you, I'm not going to ask you to come down front. You can pray right where you're at. Pray with us online, but on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise up your hand and let me know that you're praying with me. This is your day. Today, now is the moment. Now is the day of salvation. Today's your day. On the count of three, one, two, three. Just raise up your hand. Keep it up. Beautiful. Beautiful. Raise up your hand. Those watching online as well, God sees your heart. He sees your hand. Let's all pray this prayer. Would you, everybody, both here and online, church family, let's say this from our hearts. Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sins. Make me brand new. I believe Jesus died and rose again so I could know you and I could live for you. And then someday live with you forever in heaven. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can be who you say I am. My life is not my own. I give it to you. In Jesus' strong name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, New Life Church. Let's give it up for those who just came to faith in the Lord.